Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the San Francisco 49ers 2019 NFL Draft based on analytics. Uh, if you're new to the show, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, I also will have the 49ers 2018 NFL Draft Analytics Review and 2017 NFL Draft Analytics Review in the description as well so you can check out those other videos to see how the data has stacked up based on those previous drafts if you're curious about that and follow us up out of the way let's get to the first pick for the for the san francisco 49ers in nick bosa now as many people who have followed this channel or know about this channel know nick bosa is not the best pro prospect from a data perspective only at a 16.65 solo tackle score, 44.93 sack score, and 51.81 tackle for loss score. Most of this stemming from his injury history. You know, this is someone who tore his ACL in high school, uh, went on to college football, was mostly just a rotational player uh, back in 2018, and then in 2019, uh, he, uh, well, basically in his final season, I should say. He started a couple games and then got injured in terms of a core injury. Uh, so that's his story. And it's not to say that he's not talented. It's not to say he doesn't have the ability to be a starter, but his production is worrisome. Uh, he does have good athleticism traits, 66.28 in terms of explosiveness, 63.98 in terms of speed, and 92.82 in terms of flexibility for his size. So he does have Pro Bowl athleticism traits on paper but again the production is worrisome and the best sort of production comp i could find for nick bosa was barkevius mingo mingo was another guy that didn't really have great sack data tfl data or solo tackle data and but he did have great athleticism data and that didn't really seem to help him and mingo was also a top 10 overall selection just like nick bosa uh so again that's the biggest worry I have with Nick Bosa is that I think there's something missing here uh, in his profile that is making him look better than he actually is. And I do understand the film aspect of things, but again, he's just a very risky selection because there's never been a Pro Bowl, a uh, multiple Pro Bowl player with as low of a solo tackle score as Nick Bosa. And uh, there's never been, you know, all pro play. And again, with, with as little data that there is on him. So that's the biggest concern. I think there's a good chance he could become a long-term starter. But I think being a consistently elite edge rusher in the NFL is something that uh, will, he's going to have to be an outlier if that ends up being the case. And then, of course, you get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Debo Samuel, wide receiver out of South Carolina. Based on his idea, 76.93 Passing yards, mark share, production score. Uh, didn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, but did hit the three-time Pro Bowl area and the long-term starter area. I know I've done previous videos on him where his uh, production was a little bit higher. A lot of that was because uh, I was using his strength of schedule score versus the uh, market share score. So he has a much better production score compared to his uh, strength of schedule. But when you actually look at his production just isolated, it's not as great as his you know production adjusted for strength of schedule. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the averages at the position, doesn't hit the above the all-pro average, pro-bowl average, or starter average, but definitely is should be considered a starter-level prospect based on his production, or better. Uh, and athleticism-wise, great athleticism traits, 96.59 in terms of explosiveness, 92.08 in terms of speed, and 90.65 in terms of flexibility for his size. He's essentially one of the more athletic athletes at the wide receiver position and pretty much has pro bowl all pro athleticism traits and starter traits as well so good profile on Debo Samuel someone I think is going to be a good long-term starter for the 49ers age is somewhat of a concern with him but overall pretty good prospect you know pretty good prospect someone I think that who can be an instant like first year make a big impact type uh, then of course you get to Jalen Hurd wide receiver out of Baylor uh, his production, not as great as Debo Samuel, 57.51 in terms of passing yards, mark share production, doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter area. Uh, when you look at the averages, nowhere near above the averages at the All-Pro, Pro Bowl, or starter level. Uh, when you look at his MSA rating, which is basically his production for his level of competition and his age, 
uh, 52.11, so really virtually very low chance that he ever becomes all pro slash pro bowl player based on his overall data and athleticism wise he has good athleticism but not great athleticism 84.94 in terms of explosiveness 35.92 in terms of speed and 65.3 in terms of flexibility for his size Hurt is someone that definitely i think has a shot to become a starter even though he didn't hit the 58 uh production level for most starters in the nfl i still think there's a chance here that he can become that you know like i still think there's a there's opportunity for him in with this team to become a starter to secondary sort of player so i don't think he's ever going to be a star wide receiver but i do think he could develop into at least a complementary sort of uh number three number two type uh, in the nfl then of course we get to the punter that they drafted i uh, don't really have much information on him uh this year but you drafted a punter so uh, based on most of the data I've done in terms of punting averages and stuff like that, there really, there, there really is no one metric to really look at when it comes to punters other than, say, film study and other sort of things. So I haven't really unlocked much about punters or kickers or special teams types yet, but it's definitely an area that I want to improve upon in the future. And, of course, we get to Drew Greenlaw, linebacker out of Arkansas. When you look at his... Uh, production traits uh, he had a 78.95 solo tackle production score which pretty much hits at least the pro bowl threshold of the position is definitely very close to the starter average at the position and athleticism traits wise he had a 57.95 explosion score 57.32 speed score and 40.54 flexibility score his only issue is his athleticism is not exactly where he needs to be again when you look at the averages for all pro pro bowl and starter player at the linebacker position He's nowhere near the averages for that position. So he could become a starter. He definitely has the production traits to do that. But I do think his athleticism does put doubt on him becoming uh, a star player and also puts some doubt on him becoming a starter as well. And of course, when you get to the next pick uh, of the draft for them, Caden Smith, tight end out of Stanford. Uh, Production-wise, 72.62 in terms of his passing yards market share production, which hits at least above the all-pro and pro bowl threshold. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, his average is closer to the starter average than the all-pro or pro bowl average. So definitely more of a starter than a like special, special player. And athleticism-wise, he just wasn't that great. 27.60 in terms of explosiveness, 17.99 in terms of speed, and 45.05 in terms of flexibility. Uh, doesn't quite hit all the all-pro or pro bowl averages at the position doesn't hit the uh, starter averages either. You know, he's well below the average for a starting tight end in terms of athleticism traits. So definitely somewhat of a concern with Caden Smith at the tight end position. Uh, probably more of a backup type to a rotational type than like a, a guy that's going to end up becoming a starter. But definitely could become a starter because of his production, but definitely unlikely in terms of like long-term success. Uh, then, of course, we get to Justin uh, School from Vanderbilt I uh, was not able to find much athleticism data when it comes to him so I'm just going to basically ignore him and if I do get that information in the future I will have that data posted on my Patreon page uh, so if you're a Patreon subscriber if whenever I do get information in terms of Justin School's uh, athleticism data I'll be able to post that on my Patreon page and then the last pick of course is Tim Harris cornerback out of Virginia when you look at his production traits, 19.63 in terms of solo tackle data, 8.818 in terms of uh, pass deflection data. It doesn't hit the areas he needs to hit in terms of solo tackle or pass deflection data at the position. Uh, and when you look at his athleticism traits, this is where he kind of shines. 97.82 in terms of explosiveness, 89.96 in terms of speed. Don't have any flexibility testing to go off of in terms of uh, the postseason process, but he's a great athlete. He has great length. He has great size production is suspect uh, so overall my general feelings on the san francisco 49ers draft class i think this is a good but not great draft class uh, i think that nick bosa again has a chance to become a starting edge rusher but there is a lot of bust potential based on his overall data i think debo samuel has a great chance to become a starting wide receiver but there's a lot of question marks in terms of age that does factor into his transition. So like if Debo Samuel doesn't come in in his first year and make an instant impact, that's gonna look very poorly in terms of his overall projection. So Debo Samuel needs to come in and make an instant impact right now. 
Otherwise, the chances of him becoming uh, or of developing, you know, further when he's already at an older age is concerning. You know, like if a guy's this old, he should already be well developed and ready to go. Uh, then of course you get to Jalen Hurd, another guy where the production traits are not that great, but definitely has a chance to be a, a, a contributor on the offense. So you definitely want to hope he does that right away. Uh, the punter situation is a punter situation. So hopefully you would want your punter to have instant impact in one in year one. Uh, Drew Greenlaw is someone that has starter potential but doesn't have great athleticism. The same thing can be said for Caden Smith. And uh, when you get, of course, to the tackle that they took from Vanderbilt, not much information on him in terms of determining you know if he's a great athlete or a good athlete or a bad athlete. And of course, Tim Harris is a great athlete, but his production is suspect. So overall, this is just a mixed bag of stuff here. I think there are some players that are going to make it. If I was going to put my my uh, my chips on a player that I think is going to uh, have instant impact and be a, a good player for you for a while, I would say that Steve Samuel. But I think everybody else that they drafted is definitely suspect. And that's just the data talking. That's not me. It's just the data. Uh, so that's the only issue with the 49ers draft class. Uh, and of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And become a super fan by becoming a Patreon subscriber today. Uh, benefits of being a Patreon subscriber, you get the 2019 NFL Draft Analytics Guide for free if you're a Patreon subscriber. And like I said before, uh, as I'm updating player profiles and stuff that either were not in the guide or players that just kind of came out of nowhere, like Justin School, uh, a lot of those profiles I'm going to be posting onto the Patreon page uh, so that you guys have access to that information. Uh, but anyways, thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace. Thank <music> you.